Hi ladies, this is Milan of Slow Natural Wellness. I'm going to pop in today because I'm getting ready to make a really delicious lunch. Um, actually, it's going to be part of my lunch. I may even go into a little bit of my dinner. I just have to add something to it. But I noticed that as weather change, your body starts craving different foods. And sometimes you just get tired of the same old boring salad, but you know that you should be adding more grains into your, into your diet. And but like I said, you just get tired of the same old boring salad. Greens, something other green, maybe a um, cucumber and maybe something like a tomato and some sort of a bottled vinaigrette or something bottled in the store. Well, in today's video, um, we're gonna, I'm going to share with you something a little bit, di a slightly different salad that you can make yourself so you don't always have to go to the store if you want a salad. Um, unless you're just going out for a nice little cafe to a cafe or you're going out to dinner and you just want to eat salad, then that's up to you. But once you know how to make really great amazing sal salads yourself, that's never going to be a problem for you anymore. So today's, sal today's video, we're going to talk about how to build a better salad. And uh, one of the things about a salad is that it should have amazing toppings. It should be filling it should be healthy, but not so filling where you walk away feeling completely stuffed and exhausted from eating so much food. Um, and there are so many benefits in having a really good nutritious salad. So what are some things that you need to avoid when you're having a salad? And when I say need to avoid, um, this Facebook group is called Chic Women Don't Diet. And it's called that for a reason, because I don't believe in dieting. Maybe when I was younger, in my 20s and my 30s, I did. It was the lifestyle and, you know, there were so many different diets to choose from. But now that I'm older, almost 50, there's enjoy life, enjoy food. But at the same time, we have to be respectful of our feminine form. We have to be respectful of our body and, um, and the way to honor that is making sure that we're giving our body foods of a more five-star caliber not one star, two star, because that's what's available, that's what you know how to do. But try to continually elevate your taste buds and continue, continually elevate your standard of living, which includes what you're taking in and what you're eating. So some of the things to avoid if you want to continue to stay chic, stay, stay, have your body continually be balanced inside, and your body is always sending you signals when something is not right, when something is off. And we have the tendency, and maybe you have too, to just look at this and say, well, you know, it's just all part of old, old age or getting older. Well, a lot of things isn't. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Thank you for popping in. So a lot of things isn't about just being older, but your body gives you signals. So your body is always speaking to you in a language. It's just we, t we tend to ignore them. So what we're going to be avoiding in... The salads, and actually, we're gonna, this is going to be a three-day series. So I'm going to show you three different salads, so that you can see how you can incorporate various different types of greens in your diet. And it's so important right now. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard where you live, but um, there's been this really big scare about the romaine greens. So since romaine greens seems seems to be the most common salad greens. Well, if there's a problem with that, there's some contamination, then you definitely don't want to eat that grain. So we're going to do a, these three videos. We're going to do something completely different than romaine. And actually, I rarely have romaine in my home because there are so many other grains that you can choose from. So that's one thing that we're going to avoid. We're not going to be having any romaine. Um, we're not going to have iceberg either because iceberg is it's not really a lot of uh, nutritional value, but it's loaded with water. Um, so we're not going to have that. We're not going to have anything that's um, Caesar. Caesar salad is loaded with egg. And we don't want a lot of um, fats in our diet if we don't have to put them there. Healthy fats are one thing, but excessive fat, um, why put eggs in your salad if you already have it whole? Why put it in your dressing? So Caesar salad is off limits. Um, and because it's raw eggs and sometimes your body may be going through a certain transition and eating raw eggs could just completely throw you off. Once, um, 
I remember a while back, my husband was, we were eating, dining out, and uh, he had a Caesar salad. The very next day, he was puking and vomiting and diarrhea, and we traced back, what did he have that I didn't have, and it was the Caesar salad. So we're not going to have Caesar salad, we're not going to have ranch, nothing creamy, nothing blue cheesy dressing, nothing like a French Thousand Island, nothing like that. There are so many de delicious combinations of dressings that you can choose besides either one of those. And if you buy it from the store, you're getting lots of salt, lots of sodium, which could increase bloating, um, increase swelling, and especially if you're flying in high altitudes, your body just starts to change. So being careful what you're eating on ground is so important. Some of the good options that we're going to be having in our salads is arugula. Um, you can do beans, any variety of beans. You can do um, lentils, you can do um, balsamic vinaigrette or um, just a regular vinaigrette. Um, one vinaigrette can be a little different than the other, but it can still be called a vinaigrette. One could be more emulsified, the other one may not be emulsified. So what that really means is that there is a binder keeping things together and usually that binder is either anchovy paste or it could be um, uh, Dijon mustard that is also a binder that helps to suspend the liquid to stay together and solidify. So that's how you get your thicker vinaigrettes. Um, but we can have eggs, we can have fennel bulb, we can have, um, we can have citrus, we can have um, baby red potatoes, we can do avocados. So there's a whole choice of selection that you can choose to put into your salad greens without sticking to a boring old, oh my goodness. <laughs> Something just fell. I don't know what it is, um, but it scared me. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what it was. In another room. I'll check on it later. Um, but there's no one else here, so it's not like a person feels, so we're okay. Um, so, uh, today's salad, what we're going to do is a, um, we're going to do this week a farro salad with sweet potatoes and, um, and spinach. We're gonna do date saffron mint couscous salad. Doesn't that sound delicious? So today's salad is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be doing, a, this is a lentil fennel um, citrus salad. So we're gonna get started on some of our ingredients. So the first thing that I have, I have some beans which I've already rinsed off. They're just canned beans. Um, one of the things that I've learned over time is why create the wheel? Why reinvent a wheel? I knew that was some sort of expression like that. Um, so why reinvent a wheel? If why cook the beans when you could just get the can and just rinse everything, rinse the salt off of it? So if you have the time and you want to cook your own beans, by by all means, go ahead. But um, in restaurant dining, I've worked in restaurants and culinary uh, high end culinary school. They don't. They buy canned beans, rinse the things, rinse them off. So, um, so I have some beans rinsed off. And the reason I'm putting my beans on the bottom is because we're going to be using arugula as our salad greens. And arugula is a salad green. Here, let me get that out of the way. Okay. So arugula is a salad green that has a slightly uh, bitter flavor, a um, little bit peppery. But they're very fragile and the more fragile the greens you want to keep them on the top and especially if you're entertaining um, some point during the day or maybe you're having it for yourself if you want to take it with you to go like maybe in a really nice mason jar you want to put the greens those greens on the top because anything that touches it and maybe a paper towel beneath, uh, below it because anything that touches it will start to break down the, um, the greens and they wilter very fast so if you're ever having anything that's arugula um, make sure that those greens are on the very top and that's the last thing that you do especially if you're entertaining okay so we have our um, northern beans that's what we have right here and this is a filling salad so that's what we have so I'm going to sit this over to the side and um, I want to chop this just to have it out of the way because this is one in a salad. I've had this for about two, two days, so actually three days. I bought this a couple days ago. So it's hot, started to wilter because um, 
when something is exposed to air, it starts to oxidize. So it's already started the oxidation, but there's nothing wrong with that. We're just gonna cut that right off. This is a um, chef knife that I'm using, and if you don't know how to use it properly, please be careful because they're very sharp, especially if you get a very uh, brand new one. Um, this is a Shun, a Japanese knife. Um, very, very nice, it handles well, beautiful knife. So you're just gonna cut um, this off because we're not gonna use it. So what I'm gonna do is to make sure that I'm able to cut it off really nice. Um, so I'm just gonna take the top, cut that off because we're not gonna we're not using this. If you want to use it, you can. I wouldn't put this in my salad. Um, you can if you want. There's nothing wrong because it is edible. Um, but if you like and you're making a really nice plating of something, you can take the fronds off and just plate them um, as a garnish because they're really, really pretty. So you can use it as a garnish. But we're not gonna use them today. Um, I normally typically use parsley as a garnish, so we're just gonna get rid of this. So I have my little garbage right here in my old Trader Joe's bag, so I just have that right there. Normally, I usually keep something on my counter when I'm cooking and prepping food um, as my waste container because I don't like to have a lot of stuff around me. But I wanted to use a small space to show that you don't need to do a lot of cleaning up and dirtying of things. So now that we have this fennel bulb like that, and I love the fennel bulb, um, I'm just going to bridge my hand over the top and split it in half, just like that. So now you have two pieces, and it looks so much prettier in the inside. Um, but the inside, if you notice, there's this, um, the core. So we want to take the core out, and the way that we take the core out, so we're gonna quarter this again, just so it's easy to work with. And you always wanna work with a flat, any item on a flat surface, like that. And once you have it quartered, it's easier to take this core out. So you just take your knife, put it on an angle, like maybe a 90 degree angle, and just cut it out. Just like that. Simple, right? So we're going to do the same thing to this one because this is what we're going to use. We're going to use the whole fennel ball. Same with this quarter it. Always use item cut items on a flat surface so your knife won't run away from you. Um, in another video, not in this one, I will show you actually how to properly hold a chef knife because they are very sharp and you wanna make sure that you are using them in the proper way. With a really good chef knife, you don't need the block of knives. You don't need anything else. Maybe you want like a paring knife um, and a bread knife because that's different. You don't wanna use your good knife with your bread, um, especially like a baguette. Uh, so we'll just cut the last two out because it's too hard and you don't wanna eat that. Um, you want to eat on really nice bites and pieces. So now I wanted to show you that because um, we eat with our eyes first. Before we eat with our mouth, before we smell, we eat with our eyes. So everything should be nice and pretty, right? So now that we have it off, we've taken off some of this uh, brown from our fennel and cut off the brown. Can. and I'm just gonna slice it just like that because I want to have nice bite size pieces so that's gonna go I'm gonna put this on top of my beans because everything is gonna go on top of the beans and then we're gonna do our salad dressing so I'm gonna do this last piece um, get that off and you're gonna cut the end off right there cut that off um, like I said, if you don't know how to properly use a chef knife, be really careful. I have this is whatever this is what I use whenever I'm cooking, um, just to keep my board clean. This is actually a pastry, um, a bench scraper for a pastry, but I use it to help transport items to where I need them to go. And we're almost finished with our fennel gloves. Just cut that. And this one. 
this one was a little brown but um, it's okay because I'm eating it so it's not a big deal for me if it's a little brown left get rid of that one this one has a lot so I'm gonna cut that off put that off to the side so now we have to cut up our fennel So now we have um, our fennel on top of our beans and the last ingredient that's going to go on top is our arugula. Whenever I buy fresh salad greens or even fresh herbs um, in, the, in the winter months or the cooler season, I have a, um, I live in a city, um, a typical <laughs> Chicago condo. Um, it's a... Um, but it's a really nice condo. It has a, a deck um, off from my dining room. So on my deck in the summer, I always make these, I make a garden. I create my little garden and typical city garden. I would love to have one outside, but anyway, this works for me. And I don't grow the, my greens, but what I do in cooler months when I'm not able to have my garden is I will, um, I'll show you. So this is what I do to my greens. So my salad greens, whenever I purchase them from the store, I take a paper towel and put them on top. A dry piece of paper towel. And when I'm, my herbs, I do the same thing. I've had this time for about, maybe almost a week now. So this is my time, and I do the exact same thing with my thyme. So it stays greener, longer. Normally, when you buy greens, they start to wilt after maybe about three or four days right so that's one way that you can keep them fresh and green so we're not going to use our thyme we're just going <laughs> to we're just going to use our arugula so we're going to take just a bunch and put on the top just a handful um, if you want a lot more you can put a lot more on the top but for the video purposes i'm just showing you just what I usually do. And then I take this and put it right back on the top because what happens is this paper towel absorbs any water that's in here so it keeps and prevents your greens from wilting too much and start to get that smell of wilted. You know that wilted smell? I hate that. So that's what, that's what I do. And I just put it back in the refrigerator. And every green that I purchase, I do the exact same thing. All the packaged herbs I, I buy, I do the exact same thing. So we're done with that. So now we're going to get started on our um, salad dressing. Um, and we're going to use, for our salad dressing, we're using anchovy paste with just a little a teaspoon. We're going to use um, shallot. And another ingredient we're going to use is uh, lemon, fresh lemon juice. You can buy lemon juice if you want to. I just love the fruits. I like fresh lemons because sometimes I will zest the outside from my vinaigrette and put it in and then I'll use the inside. And we're also going to use um, red pepper flakes but just a pinch because it's spicy. We don't want it spicy. We want all the flavors of the salad to come through. And Dijon mustard. So Dijon mustard is really our binder um, to get the nice emulsification. So we're going to start right now with our um, some stuff away. There. There. So right now I'm just going to start with my shallot. Um, this shallot is very big. It came large just like that. So I just split it apart and I'll use the other one later. But for now, <laughs> perfect. But for now I'm just going to use this part of it. So in order to break this apart, um, if you notice, the shallot is an onion family. It's a very mild version of an onion. So I'm going to leave the fuzzy part on and I'm going to take this part off. That's how you cut an onion. And now it feels a lot easier. And this salad, it doesn't even take that long. I think I've so far been doing this for about maybe 10 minutes. Um, thank you for watching all the way through. So now the shallot is just like this. So we're going to take this, the shallot, the, sorry, the shallot. The shallot, if you look at it really carefully, has lines in it. 
So we're going to cut along those lines. That's our guide. So we're going to cut along this, the lines of this shallot right there. And this stays intact. As long as you don't cut that off and you don't cut too far back, this will stay intact. The less you cut into your onion, and this goes for a regular onion too, the less you cut into it, the less gases will be emitted from the onion and that will cause you to start you know, tearing up. So we're going to put our knife on a 90 degree angle, cut right through, turn it again, unless you're left handed, I'm right handed. So now it's still together, but it's cut. And we're going to cut, now you have, um, I'm going to put this up and let you see it. So now you have small dices and that's, that's how you cut an onion. I'm not crying. And typically, onions make me cry. So that's it for our shallot. Um, some pieces didn't quite cut so much, so I'm just going to take my knife back through, make sure they're all cut. So that's it. Those are shallots. We're going to waste, waste, waste. Now that's in there. Now I'm going to cut my uh, lemon. Put that back here. There, there. I'm working on a small space right now. So I'm going to cut my lemon. Um, I want to cut it like in quarters only because my juicer is going to add some Dijon mustard with the shallot. If you're watching this video now, perfect. You can always, you know, come back and watch it later and let me know what you think um, or if you try this. So I'm going to put just, I'm not going to measure this because I know what a tablespoon looks like. So I'm going to put about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard in there. Um, next we're going to juice our lemon. This is like a bloopers and blunders video. I think I'm just going to do it with the whole half. So now that that's done, um, let me just snare. We're going to put a little bit of anchovy paste. Why don't they have this thing with a hole in it? Unbelievable. There's some things that you buy in the store. <laughs> I sound like my mother right now. Um, okay. There we go. Huh. So we're going to put a little bit of anchovy paste. Just a teaspoon because. It's um, actually the smell, it's not that potent, it really isn't. And if you're really curious how something tastes, um, just taste it before you start finishing it. So we're gonna taste it, it's okay. Um, salty, so a little goes a long way. And we're gonna mix this up right now. This is our emulsification right here. This is the start of it. Very fishy. So we're gonna mix it up. Um, olive oil. So I'm gonna, normally how this works whenever you're doing a salad dressing, if it's two people, one person can um, whisk and the other person can stir. It works a lot faster and easier. So I'm going to put a little bit more. We want to make sure that it stays together. Suspend it. You see how nice it's coming together? Oh, I'm going to it out in here. I hope you can see it. Can you see it? Let me know if you can see that. So more, the, what I usually do to determine whether or not I've added enough oil to the right, right ratio of um, citrus or vinaigrette is by tasting it. And the best way to taste it is to take a leaf and to taste it because you need something to try on. Because if you just taste it with a spoon now in this liquid form, your tongue will taste everything. So you want to put it on something, a salad green, and then you'll be able to get the full flavors and how it's going to taste actually on your food. Um, we'll do a little bit more. Well, and I usually, whenever I make a vinaigrette, 
I put in a little package and I save it for another time. I think that's pretty much all we're going to use. So I save it for another time. I just put it in the refrigerator. So now I have vinaigrette later in the week that I don't have to make. And I don't have to purchase bottle of vinaigrette. It's so much healthier to do it yourself versus buying it from the store. So that's a vinaigrette. Um, you want to get a little, um, a little pepper in it. Um, put some salt in it. I use a very heavy salt called Malden. Um, I know I use all my fingers. Whenever I do a pinch, I use all of my fingers. I don't just do a little pinch. I grab it. If, if it's a very good quality salt, I'll use all my fingers and put it in. That's, that's a pinch. And that's, that's the pinch that I've always used since coming from culinary school and being in the net world. Um, and then the last thing we're going to put on it is um, our pepper. Like I said, this is very spicy, so a little goes a long way. I'm only going to use a small pinch. It all depends on what your taste buds want. So I'm just going to use this much for me because I don't like spicy foods, not typically. So that's our salad. Um, we're going to plate it because what good is having something when you're not going to eat some of it, right? And I like the place. Um, if I want to eat anything, I want to make sure that it's in something nice and something pretty. So I always use nice, white, pretty, restaurant-style plates. Um, so I'm going to use my tongs to take my salad greens. So there's my salad greens, my um, arugula with my white beans, my fennel, and I'm going to put it in my plate just like that. can take your salad dressing and pour it all over if you like. I personally do not like my salad greens uh, drowned in dressing. So I will take mine. I'm trying to figure out how can you see this, okay. So I will take mine and drizzle dressing on top because I want to be able to control how much dressing I'm getting because I want the flavors of the salad to come through and the only way that I can make sure that I'm doing that to really honor and taste the delicious flavors is by not drowning my salad in a, in a, in a dressing so that's it that's it this is your really um, super salad and this is part one of how to build a better salad I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think and let me know once you try it. I would really love to know um, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you thought, you know, I wouldn't use that. But and show me pace if you're wondering where to purchase it in the grocery store. It's right next, it's in the tomato paste aisle. So wherever you will find your tomatoes, um, like Italian foods, your um, canned tomatoes, you may you will find tomato paste in a tube just like this. And the anchovy paste is usually right next to it. Um, so that's it for our video. And until next time, stay beautiful and healthy.